the last couple of lessons initiated us to the five dynasties that constituted the Delhi Sultanate. We also traced the various sources that give us information on the Delhi Sultanate. Now we should begin discussing each of these dynasties in detail. In this lesson, we will be discussing the slave dynasty and the rule of the Sultan Kutubuddin Aibak. Before discussing the rule of the Sultan Kutubuddin Aibak, let me give you a little backstory. You should be remembering that Muhammad Ghuri had invaded the city of Delhi for the first time in 1191. And in the following year, that is in 1192, he took siege of the city of Delhi. And with this, he expanded his already existing Ghurid dynasty. Before discussing the rule of the Sultan Kutubuddin Aibak and the details of the slave dynasty, let me give you a little backstory. You must be remembering that in 1191, Muhammad Ghori had invaded Delhi for the first time. That is to say, from Afghanistan, he came to Delhi and invaded this city in 1191. In the following year, that is in 1192, he took control of Delhi and with this, he expanded his already existing Ghori dynasty. This marked the beginning of Turkish rule in India. So, what happened right after this? That is, what happened after Muhammad Ghuri came to Delhi, took control of it and expanded his Ghuri dynasty? Let's now talk about it. So, it was the second battle of Tarain that was fought in 1192, which gave Muhammad Ghuri the control of Delhi. Now, which ruler did Muhammad Ghuri defeat? It was Prithvira Chauhan that he defeated. And after defeating Prithvira Chauhan, Muhammad Ghuri took control of Delhi. Now, what was he doing after this? That is, after having his Ghuri dynasty spread out in India. Muhammad Ghuri was appointing few of his most trusted slaves as his viceroys. So, the area that he now conquered in India were now under the control of his most trusted slaves who became his viceroys and this he did before moving back to his homeland. Now who were these viceroys? Will you be able to name any one of them? Let us now find out who these viceroys were or who was his most trusted slave. Now, Kutubuddin Aibak was the most trusted man of Muhammad Ghori. We have already discussed at great length that Muhammad Ghori was the ruler of Afghanistan. It is from Afghanistan that he came to invade Delhi. Now, who was Kutubuddin Aibak? Kutubuddin Aibak was born to a Turkish family after which he was sold as a slave to Muhammad Ghori. So, Kutubuddin Aibak was a slave of Muhammad Ghori. And over time, this one slave of Muhammad Ghori became his most trusted man. Now, what happened after Kutubuddin Aibak became Muhammad Ghori's most trusted man? Kutubuddin Aibak was initially a slave of Muhammad Ghori. But now, Muhammad Ghori made him his general. So, as the most trusted man of Muhammad Ghori, Kutubuddin Aibak now became his general. We just discussed a while ago that Muhammad Ghori was appointing his most trusted slaves as his viceroys. Now, Kutubuddin Aibak was the most trusted man of Muhammad Ghori, which is why he became his general. And now, Muhammad Ghori appointed Aibak as the viceroy of 
all his Indian conquests. Why did this happen? Because after territorially expanding the Ghurid dynasty, Muhammad Ghori appointed these viceroys to take charge of his territorial units in India and after this he moved back to his homeland. So now Kutubuddin Aibak was the viceroy of the Indian conquests of Muhammad Ghori. Soon after Muhammad Ghori died in 1206. What happened soon after? After this in 1206 Muhammad Ghori died and immediately after his death it goes without saying that Kutubuddin Aibak declared himself the Sultan of Delhi. So why it was just him and not the other viceroys? This is because Muhammad Ghori had already appointed him as the viceroy of all his Indian conquests. So it was Kutubuddin Aibak who declared himself the Sultan of Delhi after the death of Muhammad Ghori. Now with Kutubuddin Aibak Declaring himself as the Sultan of Delhi came into being the Mamluk dynasty. So, this can be considered the moment of birth of the Mamluk dynasty. Let us find out more about this dynasty. Now, Mamluk dynasty was the first dynasty under Delhi Sultanate. Here, we are getting a very important question. What does the word Mamluk mean? The word Mamluk meant owned or slave. This word Mamluk referred to a powerful military caste that originated in the 9th century in the Islamic empire of Abbasid Caliphate. So from this came the word Mamluk. The Mamluk dynasty was also called the slave dynasty because Kutubuddin Aibak was initially a slave. And from this, this Mamluk dynasty also came to be known as the slave dynasty. Now, what were some of the very important administrative decisions that Kutubuddin Aibak took? We have previously discussed that Muhammad Ghori had invaded the city of Delhi and expanded his Ghurid dynasty. But after the death of Muhammad Ghori, Aibak declared himself the Sultan of Delhi. The area that you see marked in green shows you the extent of the Mamluk dynasty. And in this Mamluk dynasty, the city of Lahore was the capital. So, the city of Lahore was the capital of the Mamluk dynasty during Aibak's reign. Now, this brings us to another important point. Writers have often called Aibak Lakhbaksh. Do you know what that means? That means giver of lakhs. A person who initially started as a slave Aibak was a very generous man. He donated huge amount of wealth among the poor, which is why he was called the giver of lakhs. He was a very generous sultan and this earned him the title Lakhbaksh. Now let me ask you a question. Who was the founder of the slave dynasty? Was it Prithvira Chauhan? Was it Kutubuddin Aibak or was it Muhammad Ghori? Yes, you are right. Kutubuddin Aibak was the founder of the slave dynasty. Aibak was a very generous sultan which earned him the title of Lakhbaksh. Along with that, he was also a great lover of art and architecture. He was fond of art and architecture which is why he built many monuments and towers. In fact, he started the construction of the famous monument 
Qutub Minar in Delhi. But unfortunately, he was not able to finish the construction of this entire monument. It is only the basement of this monument that he could construct. Now, the very word Qutub in Qutub Minar must have left you thinking that Qutub Din Aibak intended to name this famous monument after himself. But that will be a very wrong thing to say. Why is it so? Because Qutub Din Aibak started the construction of this famous monument that is the Qutub Minar in the memory of the famous Sufi saint called Khwaja Qutubuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki. So, this monument was named after this famous Sufi saint. Just a while ago, we discussed that Qutubuddin Aibak was a great lover of art and architecture. It is for this reason that during his reign, he built a lot of mosques, monuments and towers. One such mosque was the Kuwatal Islam Mosque. What does this word Kuwatal Islam mean? This means the might of Islam. So, this Kuwatal Islam Mosque that was built by Qutubuddin Aibak means the might of Islam. This mosque is one of the oldest and among the most ancient mosques that has survived through the centuries. Where is this mosque located? This mosque is located within the Qutub complex of South Delhi. So, in South Delhi, in the Qutub complex of South Delhi, one can find this Kuwata al-Islam mosque that meant might of Islam. Now, you must be questioning, when did Qutubuddin Aibak build this mosque? This mosque was built around the same time when the Qutub Minar was also constructed. This mosque was built between 1193 and 1197. Qutub built the Kuwata al-Islam Mosque between 1193 and 1197. What was this mosque intended for? This mosque was intended to be a Jama Masjid or a Friday Mosque. This is a very important and a very old mosque that is living through centuries and generations. But this generous Sultan who was also very fond of art and architecture very unfortunately died in 1210 while playing polo. So while he was playing this game that is while Qutubuddin was playing polo he fell from the back of his horse and died. This brought an end to Qutubuddin Aibak's reign. Now, after Qutubuddin Aibak died in 1210, his son-in-law, Iltutmish, came to the throne. That is, it is his son-in-law, Iltutmish, who now came to the power. It is the rule of Iltutmish under the slave dynasty itself that we will be discussing in our subsequent lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.